And I'd just like to say, Keith, you're killing it. Oh. <laughs> Get it? That yeah. took me a second. Wow. That was wheelie good. <laughs> oh, I, I didn't have a backup. I didn't know you were going to out fun me. like really empowered right now and also totally clueless. You got this. Can you, so there should be something in my hand, shouldn't there? Sponge? Um, you're gonna want a sponge. You're also gonna want to worry about the foot pedal here. So it's not the pedal, the pedal's one <laughs> slot over. There you go. Okay. So. Like nothing's changing. <laughs> Do I need safety goggles for this? Yes, so you're gonna take your thumb and you are going to push down, leaving about a half inch clay on the bottom. If so something doesn't now feel right. You want a little bit of water. Oh God, you could lose a finger. So the sponge and the water are going to make it so the clay doesn't stick to your hand gotcha. as you're throwing. So the wheel's your tool here to make things happen. Oh, wow. There you go. Something. Yeah. So, so here's something what's happening, happening right now. Okay. Yeah. So your elbow's out here, okay. and your arm is moving with I'm the wheel. I'm right? so So what you want, you want your hands to <laughs> okay. be still, okay. hands so that the clay's still. moving through, and that you're forcing the clay to do what okay. you want. Okay. I'm forcing the clay. Exactly. Wow. I'm See? flexing my muscles right now. You do you have guns? Yeah. This is like hard. <laughs> I'm like um, working up Yeah, but it's sweat. also, it's not, so if you were to brace your elbows in, into your oh. body, into your hips, wherever, you're gonna end up using your whole body for it versus just your hands. Okay. So my mentor was this five foot one Japanese Hawaiian woman who threw six foot pieces. Wow. So it's not just power, it's about kind of controlling the clay. The okay. wheel is our tool. That's and a good, that's a, a good water. start. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, so. Nice little. Nice little candle holder um, or something dog bowl? I just feel like your hands don't finish looking like this. That... I have shorter nails. Okay, oh, you don't have claws. All right, why don't we let you, is this salvageable? Could you do something with this? We can try. Okay, yeah. let's try. Okay. okay. How long have you been doing this? I mean, I guess I took my first class in high school, but just kind of like a, not as a joke, just to get through the art requirement. And you didn't know in high school that this was like your destiny becoming? No, no, not at all. I didn't even realize it in college. I just, all of a sudden I realized I was spending about 14 hours a day in the studio. Started using, you know, firing a kiln as an excuse for not handing papers in on time yeah, with my exactly. other professors. Mm -hmm. They didn't, they never bought it. Something magical Something is happening happened. here. I gotta know what's happening. I'm just cleaning up the bottom a bit. So there's some excess clay. So whenever you're throwing, um, you need the clay to support, right? So we're, we're talking physics here. So a lot of clay. I'm out. <laughs> oh, we're talking physics? Okay, bye. Just show me the finished bowl and you've got um, it. You know, you need the support. The wheel is spinning as a tool and your hands are kind of controlling it. Yeah. My hands, so your hands, remember we were talking about how they were going around with the clay? I recall. So my hands, if you look closely, my elbow's locked in, right? So like, and my hands are connected. Everything's happening together so that as that wheel spins, I'm letting that go one revolution around before I move it. That's such a beautiful synergy, and everything just comes together. So where is this headed? What do you see in this bowl? I see fried rice. That's That always sounds good. I know. Maybe I'm also just yeah. hungry. It's, it's totally processed. So you really you really have to love process to, to work with clay. So when I used to teach workshops, one of the first things I did when I was teaching someone how to, how to throw was they'd have you know the first few pieces, and we would do this. <gasps> and that way you can yes! get a sense. I know, right? And that's the reaction you want. But it's also because the process matters more than the result. So you're never going to learn unless you can realize that this doesn't matter. That knowing how to do this again I know matters. it doesn't matter, but it was so beautiful. It can still be salvaged, I promise. It is. Now we have a new piece, right? Yeah. We can connect that. I mean, that's the fun thing about clay is that you can do whatever you want. RIP my first full <laughs> bowl here. You did great. Yes, I did great. Now I'll start back at square one. That's really cool. Yeah. So we got a window into the making process. Again, thank you for trusting me. You did great. I'm never this... going to wash this clay off. I feel these are like battle wounds <laughs> from my day at the wheel. Perfect, yeah. So mm -hmm. here's some of the beautiful finished products. So. I mean, I, these like take my breath away every time I see them, but where do you thank get you. some of the inspiration for this? 
When I first moved to town, actually, I switched my clay body, I switched everything when I moved here in 2009. Uh. So I want to take all the variables out. And that's why I started doing the black and white work. And it was a way of kind of like figuring out form and like stripping it down to the basics of what I do and really focusing on that. And then that's where I started doing these kind of black inlay designs, like that bowl there. And, yeah. um, and then this oval is one of our kind of signatures as well. Yeah, hold that there for a second. They're yep. so like clean and simple. Is your style like this in real life, like with your clothes and your life? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty boring, but I'm a total mess. So like my finished work is the complete opposite of my real life, which is like my closet is a disaster. That's what I wanted to know. Um, and I was not implying that you are boring. I just mean like, is this, do you like straight lines or is your life at home kind of like, messy? I like order, I, um, but I'm not very good at it. My kids, they mess with me and they leave cabinet doors open a little bit and that drives me absolutely bonkers. But I can step over like a pile of laundry and that doesn't bother me. And carry me on about yep. your day. Yep. I know so exactly how that goes. I can goes. pick and choose what really bothers me. But. So where can we see some of these things across town? Uh, we work a lot of restaurants now, obviously. So Uchi and Uchiko both have stuff. And what's been fun is, you know, collaborating with chefs, we get to kind of play off our designs and give them something individual to work with. And I think we have these really easy conversations about it because it's about taking some raw ingredients and turning it into something. Yeah, um, and that's what I think is so neat. You know, these chefs spend hours preparing these beautiful meals and it's even enhanced by, well, now let's put it on a plate that also had a lot of love and time that went into making it. Yeah, and it's from the pottery world, um, which I lived in for 20 plus years, that was a no-brainer. Why do you do this? Like 20 years later, why is this still significant for you? Uh, um, I don't know how to do anything else. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's the fun thing. It's like, you know, each piece leads to the next. I'm just at home in the studio. Um, I love um, I love what I do. Yeah. Um, and there's something concrete at the end, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of jobs, you're kind of, you don't see the final product of what you do. But for here, it's start to finish. If you knew someone who was venturing out into creative field like you are, yeah. what would you tell them if they're young and getting started? Uh, make a lot of mistakes. So it's really easy to start something. It's really easy to start this project, but you have to follow it through to the end. And that's what separates, you know, an amateur or even a semi-pro or pro-am, whatever, versus, you know, being a professional. It's, you have to say you're going to do it, and then you have to do it. And commit and do mm -hmm. it, yeah. yeah, and then make a life out of it. What do you call yourself? We're always wondering, in 2017, are you a potter, a, you know, we call you a visionary? What yeah, do you call yourself? That's a yourself? little intense. <laughs> um, I, I, I make things, I design things. Um, technically, I'm a potter. Yeah, um, but it encompasses a lot more. But it you. does. At heart, I'm a potter. Um, I, take raw clay and I turn it into something and hopefully people use it.